Hi, I'm David Barrett of bluesharmonica.com. And I'm Peter Egbert, a professor of ophthalmology at Stanford University. And we're here to talk about the creating of the multiple papers that we've done and also the video images that you've probably seen on YouTube in regards to the tongue or the imaging of the tongue and the vocal tract in the bending process on the harmonica. Okay. So we're going to take a moment and talk a little bit about really how this, uh, how this came about and also our findings or our observations, I guess is the best way to put it. Uh, Dr. Peter Egbert is a student of mine here at School of the Blues and uh, it's commonplace for me over the past 20 years to ask my doctor students, say, I saw this video imaging done with Howard Levy and Howard Levy's playing on the harmonic and you can see his tongue. And my desire was to do that same type of idea, but slow it down and be really purposeful about the process. Here's the tongue in this position doing this type of bend. And I wanted something that the student can see exactly what was happening inside the mouth to be able to take away some of the mysteries of the bending process. Because one of the challenges of the harmonica is that we can't see our own tongues in the bending process. And of course, as the student, you can't see mine in the bending process, nor can you visually confirm where your tongue is and where we might want to change it. And I've, I've asked this of my doctor students, can we set up something to do something similar to that or even better since the technology has changed? And usually they say, well, let me see what we can do. And uh, I never hear anything about it and I just kind of <laughs> let it drop. And I asked Peter and then two weeks later, he, uh, I get an email that says, all right, I've got our team together. And he lists these guys and let's get together on these dates. So obviously Peter's a make it happen type of guy. Can you, uh, Walk us through the process from the moment that I brought this idea to you and maybe even why you yeah. felt that was a fun thing to do. Well, I felt, I felt it was important because you would, you would tell me how you do it. You, you, you move your hand like this and you explain the tongue, and I'm kind of saying to myself, how does he know that? <laughs> I didn't have complete trust in you in the early days. And I, I saw those eyes. Or... I saw your eyes looking at me from the eyes of a doctor thinking, ah. And, you know, you're probably right, but how do you know that? And so partly I just... I guess the biggest thing is I just just wanted to know, see if we could see it. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I was thinking that more than would it really help me play. Okay. Just any new information is interesting. Now, now I was well aware, as, as you mentioned, there, there are a few things Howard Levy and uh, Dr. Banson, Dr. Ataki have done certain imaging. And um, so that those are, are, are good steps. There are new techniques now, though, I, the ways of imaging have improved over medicine dramatically, continuously over, for, well, forever, certainly the last 30 years, big changes. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking, maybe we can do something better. In ophthalmology, we do do ultrasound of the eye. You hold a little probe on the eye and you can see the internal structures of the eye. So I said, well, maybe that starts. So I was thinking maybe it'd just be easy. I try that on the cheek. Doesn't do any, doesn't show anything that's useful. Um, so I talked to other people that use ultrasounds because ultrasounds are used for different things. You use it for pregnancy and you use it for uh, carotid arteries and so they're different ones and I found somebody in radiology that had access to different ultrasounds and he showed me what seemed to be the best one and we got some image but it wasn't good but, and so then my friend the radiologist said well I have a colleague in radiology who is doing MRI studies for sleep apnea. Sleep apnea is of course when you can't uh, you stop breathing because parts of your throat collapse during sleep, and, and so he's trying to look at that. And uh, he's able to do that because now there are fast MRI machines that can capture images pretty fast, almost, almost real time, where you used to have to have something that would hold still for, oh, several minutes before you could get an image. Now, because the hardware and software advances, we could get an image now within a couple seconds, a really good image, and a pretty good image in uh, up to three in one second. Mm -hmm. So I talked to the uh, Lewis Chin, this radiologist, and he was very, very nice and accommodating and, and interested, somewhat skeptical that this was really going to go to something useful. We're really serious about this. Uh -huh. But the nice thing about the university, you can find lots of people who are interested in anything that has to do with acquisition of new, new knowledge without necessarily having an endpoint. That, that you're striving for for some purpose. It's just uh -huh. the knowledge itself is a sufficient purpose. Right, or an end point that may make money down the road because as we yeah. all know, there's no money in the harmonica world. And that's not insignificant, <clears throat> of course, in medicine, but uh, in acad academia, it's, it's not, it's often not the, not the main thing. So, hmm. 
So um, Lewis agreed that we'd do this. And I think about it more, I realize I'm way over the head in terms of music. I, I do eye surgery, but I know nothing about music. And I take it with harmonica, and you know a lot about music. But I said, well, we, maybe we should have somebody else that uh, knows about the physics of this. So I sent an email to the head of the Department of Music at Stanford, get an email right back, said, well, that's a cool project, but I, no, it's not my field, but I'll send it out to all the other people in the faculty. A day later, I get something back from Dr. Thomas Rossing and says, yeah, that's great. I'd like to be part of it. And he is a physicist by training, but he's worked for the last couple of decades of his career in music. And he teaches a class on the physics of musical instruments at, at Stanford, um, which I've taken. Fascinating. And I had never quite connected that, well, you, you have, there is a physics, of physics, obviously, to musical instruments, how something plays, whether the, the acoustics, what produces the certain sound waves that come out that give a certain timbre and so forth. But of course, when you sing and when you do something like whistle or blow harmonica, the physics of the musical instrument is your vocal tract. And so we're defining vocal tract as from the lips on down to your vocal folds. Mm -hmm that area, so it's your mouth and your pharynx. So he said he'd like to be interested. So, that was, so we had a team then with a professional harmonica player and a professional musician and a professional radiologist and then me who <laughs> was nothing, nothing, had no special expertise to bring on this except I was interested. Um, so that's how we got started.